Hello, hello, hello. Today is Thursday, April 11, 2024. Solutions to problem 197. It was a simple filter circus to pass DC voltage, but to remove as much as possible any component such as 50 or 60 hertz line voltage that could cause hum in your stereo receivers. Only five correct solutions. Sad, but that's the way it is. Of course, Keith Norman has the right solution and I will show you his video solution which follows shortly. Eugen, as always, not Ulf Heller. I don't understand why. Uh, it may have slipped through somehow, but I certainly didn't see it. Neither did Eugen, nor did Keith Norman. However, there are three people who had correct solutions that I had never even heard of. One is Michael Burning 9361. One is Think Like Tesla. And one is Maurizio Bani Coni 9480. <laughs> yeah, difficult to pronounce. If you couldn't solve the problem, there could be two reasons. You just didn't want to spend the time to learn something which you could have done from lecture 25 of my 802 lectures. Or simply because you don't give a care. You don't care. You don't give a whatever. That's up to you. But of course, it's disappointing for me because my goal is to broaden your horizon in physics to teach you physics. And if you don't make any effort to solve a problem that is perhaps a hair above your knowledge, well, that's unfortunate. Mostly for you, but in a way also for me. So if you're ready, I'm ready, here falls the video solution of Keith Norman. This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 197 uh, and it concerns an inductor and a capacitor uh, acting as a low pass filter uh, and we're told R is very small, the, the ohmic resistance. We're going to consider V1, the DC component, and V2, the sinusoidal component, as separate cases, and then use superposition to find out, uh, V out, what's going on there. So, for V1, um, this circuit simply looks like uh, two wires running like that. So, the DC component uh, is of V out is going to be V in. That will be true for any constant current. If there was a load here drawing a constant current, out there and back that way, then that condition V out equals V in uh, for the DC part would still be true. Okay, for the AC part, um, I hope if you're unsure where this heads, you will have looked at Walter Lewin's 802 Lecture 25, uh, where he talks about uh, the um, reactance of an inductor. Uh, when dealing with sine or cosine waves and the reactance of a capacitor when dealing with sine and cosine uh, inputs. Uh, and, we, and he shows that uh, uh, the reactance for the inductor equals omega L and for the capacitor equals 1 over omega C uh, and that voltage leads current by pi by 2 for the inductor uh, and voltage lags current by pi by 2 for the capacitor. So for our AC um, analysis we have a circuit that looks like this. If there was some, uh, oh, we're told that XL is greater than XC, a reactance of the inductor greater than that of the capacitor. 
if, we're if we had some resistance in this circuit, you would see from his lecture uh, 25 of 802 that the impedance, which is the name given the combination of resistance and reactance, uh, would be that. That's the uh, um, mod modulus of it. But R is zero, so the uh, impedance simply becomes this, which I can rearrange to that. So, um, part A, the uh, alternating current through here is V2 uh, divided by the impedance, this, which gives us that expression here. Uh, and notice, uh, because we're told the uh, inductor dominates, we have a lag, the current lags, um, by pi by 2. For part B, I've already said that the uh, DC component, V1, comes to V out unaffected, so we are, but we also have the um, AC component, V2 out. Uh, well, charge on the capacitor is always going to be C times V at any instant, so it's that. So simply rearranging uh, our AC component is that expression there at the output. The current uh, through the capacitor will be V2 um, divided by uh, the impedance. That's the total impedance. Uh, and also we know that the current is defined as dQ by dt at the capacitor. So it must be this expression here. Well, if I rearrange this and feed in the, the substituting values, I can get an expression for V2 out, uh, which is this here. And note straight away that the capacitor, the C will cancel with that C. And when I integrate this, I will get this expression here. If I integrate this bit, I'll get this little bit here, which will in introduce a minus one over omega, and of course, cos omega t minus pi by 2, so at this point I can then lose the omega and the omega. A little bit of trigonometry here um, shows that that equals that, uh, so I can then uh, rearrange this to give us the final expression here uh, of v2 out, uh, and the phase difference is pi, in other words 180 degrees, um, and it can be plus or minus pi, it's the same thing. So that's the expression for V2 out. And finally, the attenuation, where I'm only concerned with the amplitude, uh, not the phase at this point. Well, V2 out um, divided by uh, V2 is the attenuation, which is simply this expression divided by that, which gives us that. For uh, a large attenuation, we want this to be very large, so that this term here is very small. Um, and we can see, well, when that is large, uh, it's much, much greater than zero. So rearranging, we can see that that condition is true. Uh, and so XL, the, the uh, reactance of the inductor, must be much, much greater than the reactance of the capacitor. Uh, and as a very final approximation, um, you may well end up saying, well, if that term is m much, much greater than, than one, then that approximates to that. And that is my solution. Thank you.